Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Topic Time with Harrison Young, episode number six in the town of Bridgewater since I moved it here. Uh, well, we've got a little issue with the cameras, but we're doing okay. We've got, a, we've got two people here. We've got myself and my awesome guest, and uh, I always pride myself in diversity in my guests. I've had, since I've been here to Bridgewater, I've had an, an actor, a model. I had Vinnie Paz on last week, the five-time world champion boxer. I had an artist, and I had a musician, and now I have one of my favorite types of genres, the author, and I, you know, I use that sentence in a, in a way that kind of doesn't clash because authors have a genre, and this gentleman here is Matt Bechtel. He has a genre. He has a bunch of books he's written, a few books, and he just start, he, he and another gentleman, I believe, started a, a publishing company called, what's it, Decon e it's, it's Nikon eBooks. Nikon eBooks. Which was born out of... Uh, the Northeastern Writers Convention, affectionately named Camp Nikon. Well, we can get into all of that history Perfect. in a bit. And, and, and he's going to actually do something that no guest has ever done before. First I've got, time. Yeah, this is great. I love it. He took a swig of, he took a swig of bourbon before we uh, started our show. He might want he has it hidden behind his two books that he's got here on his stands. He might want to take another one. His girlfriend's driving him tonight, so I guess he'll be safe. But he's also going to do something like, it's so different. He's, I, I love writing, and I've been, I don't know if you guys know this, but before I became the greatest TV talk show host on earth, I was a writer as well, and I still am to some extent. I wrote a book of short stories, and uh, he's living my dream, and he's actually going to you know, read a couple of stories from a collection of short stories he wrote, and we're going to talk about them um, after you know, we do a little uh, profiling of him, and that'll be great. But it's kind of like where I, where I, it's kind of cool because oftentimes I'll have a musician on in here or in my show, and I'll, they'll play a song, and we'll talk about the music and the type of song it is and the meaning behind the lyrics, and we're going to do the same thing with his book. It's almost like I'm getting a, a, a story. It's like I'm getting a bedtime story read to me. But before we do that, you just told me that you know how you how your publishing company started, and how, I'm gonna, like I do with all my guests, I profile them specifically and find out well, how they got to where they're at now. So tell me about yourself and how you became an author. I mean, what were you like as a kid? I, I assume you enjoyed the written word all your life, correct? Yes. Because I did too. Yes. Tell me and, about that. Where'd you um, grow up and how did that came uh, I was I was born just south of Detroit, Michigan, oh, right, about, right, you know, right about there man. on the, okay. the Min, um, into uh, uh, a mostly Irish family of where creativity was always so encouraged. Cool. Anything we did that was creative, um, and, and this is not to say, you know, I, I played sports, I ran around outside, we had every Atari game known to man in cool. the early 80s, and yet still, um, my older brother and my older sister and I, we were always uh, staging plays. Cool. And, when you say and staging certain... plays, are these plays that you guys co coagulated to create yourself? Yes, my, my brother was the Pied Piper, he was the oldest, he was, he was the, the playwright. Cool. At that time, yep. but I, when we then later, when I was around six, seven, we moved to New England. We moved to Connecticut. Okay, and uh, <laughs> that was Yankee when the Court of King Arthur. And that was the time when VCRs were first starting to come around. So we got the first uh, camcorder. Okay, and my brother would uh, gather the entire, all the other kids in the neighborhood. And we would do uh, a regular show called Monday Night Live, which was just like the kids in the neighborhood Saturday Night Live ripoff. Okay. Did it, did, <laughs> and did, it, did it give Monday Night Football good competition at the time, you think? Well, every one of our parents always came over and watched every episode we premiered. So cool. we, had, we had a loyal, if not related, fan base. This is incredible. <laughs> and, but it was, you were it a bunch of really was, precocious kids. And how old were you? How, old, yes. how many years older than your brother? Was, than my my was brother's brother. seven years older than me, so he was 13, 14 and you at were the like time. Six. Okay. I was six. My sister's two years older than me. She was in. So I was the baby, of the, was, was the baby wow. of the family. Okay, yes. cool. Yes. And, but, why, was it, yeah. why did it have to be Monday nights? Why couldn't it be Saturday? Couldn't it be, could it just, did it just have to be? It was like a Monday night ritual? Ask my night? brother. He was the executive producer. Okay. I, 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 all right. We'll get him on the show and I'll ask him. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but again, so even, and, I've, and I'm talking my family, I have to even go all the way back. My grandfather uh, was a writer. Okay. And he spent 50 years uh, working in various jobs for the Detroit News. Wow. Um, cool. So 
the I, I like he to was say a journalist, right? Or was that did he write did he write fiction too, or just uh, for for himself mostly? Okay. Yes. Was he a published author, or just did he just do it? For, I mean, I know he was a journalist, but did he was did he get? I, I don't believe he ever had okay. any fiction or, or poems published. Okay, that's but, cool. But still, so this is this is generations, and I know that I'm not saying any anyone watching is you know from a, a big Irish family, okay. and you know. Uh, Probably he's had experiences. I, I would think like me. It's one of a, it's one of the good stereotypes, <laughs> you Absolutely. know. Um, is, is is the creativity and and the imagination and my parents. You know, when I think, God about, bless when I think them, of an they, Irish author, the you know the most prominent one that comes to mind is O. Henry. <laughs> I mean, one you know, of the great short stories. One of the, the, the ironic ending. Greatest short, short story writers. Absolutely. Ever without a shadow of a doubt. Yep. Did you, I mean, well, I'm, I'm bringing this up because I'm wondering if any of these guys or women inspired you at all, and with you, if any, or not. To, to... Uh, cer certainly, I mean, and, and not just Irish. I would absolutely right. put O. Henry, o. Henry um, yeah. as, is one of my my major influences. Um, Ernest Hemingway there you go. is is another, I've and read plenty of his stuff. Um, incredible you know, we'll we'll cycle back around to this yep. again. But Ernest Hemingway. Uh, was the favorite of Bob Booth, yep. who was my mentor, who founded both the Nikon Convention and the Nikon eBooks Digital Publishing Company. Cool. So that was something that he and I bonded over uh, almost immediately when we met years How long back. Was that? We met uh, exactly just about, <laughs> about just about exactly. Yeah, um, it was fall of 1996. Oh, 21 years ago. And wow. it was. It was the greatest job interview I've ever had. Okay. Because I was an undergraduate at Providence College. Cool. And when I was, was in high school. Was your major in literature there? In English, yes. English, okay. Yes. English with a theater minor. Got because it. I'm a ham. Cool. And I like being on stage. So um, when I was in high school, I thought I would probably follow in my grandfather's footsteps and said, well, I want to write. So what's the best way to have a career as a writer? Go into journalism. Cool. So I joined the high school newspaper, and one year of that made me realize, nope, that is not me. That is not what I want to do. Okay. But the high school newspaper staff also had to do the layout of the paper, wow. which all the way back what in the mid-90s. What high school mid -90s, you went to? Uh, New Canaan High School yeah, in New Canaan, Canaan Connecticut. Connecticut. I know. Yes. I, is that, yes. Unfortunately, in, in, there was a famous murder there they made a film about. Mm, but that, that, that had nothing to do I, with I, I swear I wasn't involved. I know. You weren't even there yet then, were you? It was 1973, so I'm guessing you... My lawyer advises me not to speak on the matter. Okay, we'll so, drop it right now. Cool. Um, so I learned the, the page layout software called PageMaker, okay. which, yes, everyone who's in graphic design is laughing right now at PageMaker. Hey, that's what was what in 94. Okay. So, uh, so I went to college, and there's a fine arts requirement, and yep. I'm very creative. I, you know, I love writing. I love acting. I love performing. I can't draw for squat. Me either. <laughs> so, um, but there was a class in PageMaker. Okay. And I was like, okay, easy grade. I already know it. So I took it. PageMaker sounds almost like and graphic I did well. art. Uh, it's, it's page layout. It's the text goes here, the pictures go here, it's for... Well, yeah, but you don't but, actually draw them, you just put them together. No, right? yes. Well, it's not, it's not as difficult as drawing them. No, it's not. But you, but you, but it's like, it yeah. sounds like, like, it, like, kind of like journal editing or magazine that's, editing. That's exactly what right. it is. Right, okay. So, skipping ahead, um, I did well in the class, and the right. professor said, hey, if you're looking for an on-campus job, there's this office that needs undergrads who know how to do PageMaker. Cool. And so, uh, first day of classes, my sophomore year, yep. I went to this office that he told me to go, and I walked in, and the office is completely empty, except there was a man and a woman in one of the back offices just talking. Yep. And I wandered back, and I said, uh, hello, uh, Richard Elkington uh, told me to stop by and ask about employment. He said, you might be looking for undergraduates who know PageMaker. And the man and the woman looked at each other, and the man looked at me and said, you know PageMaker? I said, yes, sir, I do. He said, you're hired. What's okay. your name? Their entire staff had graduated. They, wow. they had no undergraduate. And that man was Bob Booth. And Bob was, you know, his day job was the production manager of the Publication Center at Providence College. But he was always a writer and a dreamer. And he was the founder of Camp Nikon, the Northeastern Writers' Convention. Okay. And... As he and I bonded. Where, was, where exactly? Where was the location of this place? A, a Nikon is held at Roger Williams University every summer. Okay, that's another college in Rhode Island. Yes, Bristol, okay. Rhode Island. Yes. And My about went it. There now that I think so, of it. Okay, go on. So uh, it didn't take long for Bob and I to become like this. Cool. And about a year into me working for him, he came to my desk at in the office one day. Yep. And he's like, "Stop working. I I got something I want to show you." And he pulls out this photo album. 
And it's all these photos from what would be at the time the first 17 years of Nikon. And he starts going through the pictures. He's like, that's Charles L. Grant. He's a best-selling author. All he does is write. That's Rick Howdala. All he does is write. Um, that's Ginger Buchanan. All she does is run Penguin Publishing. She's a, Penguin you know, Publishing. She was. She yes. Hey, that's a huge. That's like one of the biggest publishers in the world. Yes. It's not the biggest. Yes. Yeah, so it's one of them. Oh, not quite embraced too, oh, but one of those. Over and over. League. Over and over again. All he does is write. All she does is write. All she does is cover art for books. And he looked at me and he said, "I know you want to be a writer." Never let anyone tell you you can't do it. Beautiful. And he said, I've never brought one of, he called all of us undergrads his kids. He said, I've never brought one of my kids to Nikon, but I'm going to bring you this summer. Meaning you. Meaning me. Sure. And Terrific. that was Nikon uh, 18. And this year I celebrated my 20th summer at Nikon. I have never missed since, and I am now part of running the convention and running the, the publishing company that grew out of it um, to say that my life would be far different had I not wandered into that office in September of 1996 wow. is the, probably the understatement of the century. That is awesome. All right, well, you no. know what? You, you, you know, you told me something that I really, really you know, got me thinking, got, me, got my juices flowing, my mm -hmm. literary juices flowing. You said mm -hmm. you've got some books here, and we're going to mm -hmm. discuss them, but you also said, like, you know, you wrote, some, you wrote a collection of short stories. Yes. And the, and the genre was kind of like dark humor. You it's wanna... dark humor, satire. I, I, that's my um, favorite. It, it is, yep, it is, it is right here. It so is I, called I, what I want to ask you to do now is to, is to, to, is to open the money that, one of those books and read a story. Tell, I, like, I would like love I'm, to. Like I'm an anxious ch child who wants to, yeah. whose parents wanted to go to bed, so I say, you read me a nice bedtime story and I'll do it. So that's this isn't going to... Except I won't go to bed. I'll and go. that's good, because this isn't going to be a nice bedtime story. That's okay. That's, okay. That's so, yes, this okay. is my first original collection. Monochromes and Other Stories came out this spring. It was published by Haverhill House Publishing, cool. which is a new uh, independent small press. In Haverhill, um, Mass. It, based out of Haverhill, Massachusetts. Yep. Um, the owner and uh, editor-in-chief and publisher is an author uh, named uh, John M. McIlvain. Cool. Who, of course, I met at Nikon. There you go. I, I promise you before we started filming, I tell you the story of how uh, how I was signed by by Haverhill Press to do this collection. Ten years ago, John was uh, editing an anthology okay. of dark humor stories. Cool. And it was my and I, I submitted and he bought my story. It was my first professional sale. Wow. And due to circumstances beyond anyone else's control, yep. um, the anthology never saw the light of day. The project got scrapped towards the end of it. It was never published. Sometimes that happens, but it, these things happen. happens for a reason. I always yes. say that. So fast forward about a decade later, yep. um, John calls me one day and he's like, yeah, I've, I've decided I'm, I'm founding my own publishing company, wow. Haverhill Press. And I, I remember because I didn't just send him that one story. I sent him a couple to choose from. Right. And he said, you know, I've, I've known for, for 10 years, I've, I've been wanting to work with you again. Okay. And I said, that's, that's amazing. What story do you want? And he said, all of them. Whoa. And Ooh. I was and I said, Well okay. Must, <laughs> and must, and it is where, it's like that feeling only better. You see that car commercial? Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, that yeah. was um and so uh a, a few months later after uh the work of tremendous people who are involved at, at Haverhill Press. You know, writing can be very solitary. Writing well, can be very it. lonely. I'm write it too. Publishing is collaborative. Right. Because this book would not exist without John McIlvain. There you go. Without the amazing cover artist, Dyer Wilk. Okay. Uh, without my first beta reader, Diane Buja. Without uh, the amazing proofreader, Marianne Halbert. And I want to give all those people who are involved in this a shout out. Because, yeah, Ooh, they're my oh, stories, but yeah. this they're my stories, but this book is all of ours and would not be here without, without everyone. So, enough further ado. So, I, the other reason I uh, told that story is I figure it would only be appropriate to read the story that John originally bought 10 years ago. From you. From me. Let's do it. Yes, because it is. In here. Name the title, read it, and the, we'll discuss it afterwards. The I title. Be a captive audience and enjoy it. No, sure you got, well. they won't let you leave, so you got to be captive. Now you uh. listen too, folks, because this is good stuff. It's great yeah. stuff. Okay. Okay, this, this story is called Telesurf. Telesurf? Telesurf. Serve. Teleserve. T e l e s e r v. S e r v. Got it. Yes. Teleserve. <clears throat> Welcome to Teleserve, the state's unemployment benefits payment by telephone service. To use this system in English, please press one. Boop. To ensure payment is mailed correctly, we'll need to verify your address. Does the state have your current address? If so, press one. Boop. 
The state employment security law provides penalty for giving false information in order to receive unemployment benefits or for failing to provide information in order to receive benefits. Please enter your social security number now. Beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, beep, 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 boop. Please enter your BYE code now. The BYE code is the two-digit code found next to your social security number at the top of the Teleserve notice form we mailed to you. Enter your BYE code now. Boop, boop. Please hold for a moment while we check for your claims record. Please enter your personally chosen four-digit PIN identification number now. Beep, boop, boop, beep. Thank you. You must listen to each question in its entirety before answering. Press 1 to answer yes or press 2 to answer no. The question will repeat if interrupted. To begin, please press 1 now. Boop. Are you claiming benefits for last week? Boop. Were you able and available for full-time work last week? Boop. Did you look for full-time work last week? Boop. Did you return to full-time work last week? Beep. Did you refuse any work offered to you last week? Beep. Did you work part-time, earn or receive any vacation pay, bonus pay, or wages last week? Beep. Did you apply for or receive any social security or private pension last week? Beep. Did you apply for or receive any workers' compensation, TDI, sick pay, or disability last week? Beep. It's 2.37 p.m. on a Wednesday. Did you just wake up? Boop. You stayed up all night drinking again, didn't you? Boop. Do you have any idea what you're going to do with yourself when your unemployment benefits run out in a month and a half? Beep. You'll probably wind up crawling back to your parents with your tail between your legs, won't you? Beep. Again, the state employment security law provides penalty for giving false information over the teleserve system. Are you sure you won't be moving back in with your parents? Beep. That's what I thought. Are you going to get drunk again tonight? Boop. And the night after that? Boop. Do you even remember the last night you didn't drink? Beep. Do you remember the last night you slept well? Beep. It's starting to get to you, isn't it? Boop. Are there dishes piled in your sink, dirty laundry all over your floor, and frozen food boxes overflowing from your garbage can? Boop. You are so predictable. Have you even showered in the last couple of days? Beep. But you can't break out of it, can you? If you need more time to answer, press the star key. Otherwise, press 1 to answer yes, or press 2 to answer no. You can't break out of it, can you? Beep. Have you thought about beep? Have you thought about beep? You must listen to each question in its entirety before answering. The question will repeat if interrupted. Have you thought about beep? Have you thought about beep? You must listen to each question in its entirety before answering. The question will repeat if interrupted. Have you thought about beep? Have you thought about killing yourself? Beep. Again, the state employment security law provides penalty for giving false information over the teleserve system. Don't lie. Have you thought about killing yourself? Boop. Have you thought about how you do it? Boop. You're going to overdose on pills, aren't you? Boop. Figures. Of course a milk toast like you would use pills. A real man would blow his own head off. Have you ever even shot a gun? Beep. You know what your problem is? Boop. You're a wimp, aren't you? Boop. You just can't take one on the chin. You lose one lousy job and you crawl inside a bottle and inside your own head, don't you? Boop. And you've crawled so far deep inside that you can't pull yourself out. Isn't that right? Boop. It's 2.37 p.m. on a Wednesday. Is this the only conversation you've had all week? Boop. Thank you. Your request for payment has been accepted. This guarantees your payment will be mailed to you automatically. 
Please do not call the call center to verify payment. Thank you for using the Teleserve system. Goodbye. All right. Yeah, that's pretty good. You, you, cover, the, you cover the gamut of, uh, of, of, of the typical, well, as Howie Carr would say, moon bat existence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I will openly admit I have collected unemployment benefits actually a couple of times in my life, and the first seven questions are word for word transcribed see, from yeah. what that, what that, uh, Tell what that's tell serve like, sound, yeah. sounded like. Do they actually know? tell you that, uh, that there's a penalty for, you know, penalty for li penalty for lying, yeah. and you have to let the uh, the question. You can't interrupt the question, or it will repeat. Okay. Um, all of that was 100% uh, verbatim. Um, fortunately, everything after it's 2:37 p.m. on a Wednesday came from in here. Yeah, it was very <laughs> so, clever. Very clever. Okay. Yeah, I, I I won't lie. I was inspired by when I was doing it. I was always afraid what if they start asking more questions so it's like what what what's gonna you know what if all of a sudden there's something you're not expecting after question number seven and I know, you, you, that's the fun part about being a writer you can take a you can totally idea can paranoid like silly a ridiculous idea that's you know scaring you for no good reason right and you can scare other people with it instead yeah, sure. so yeah that suicide thing that was that that was something that uh, i bet a lot of people might might be in that boat they might say, "Yeah, I'm considering it," but uh, I want to do I it. But you know, the the, cha the challenge to you, the, you know, do it in a, in a less wimpy way, you know, you know, in a more forceful way, is pretty incredible. I mean, that's well, with, with in, in that story in particular, you know, I when I first came up with the idea, yeah. I, I actually thought, okay, it's just a gimmick story because yeah. there's no dialogue. There's really it's the voice of the phone and the beep and, and the, the, beep and the cool, boo. Yeah. And I was like, and so at first I was just like, well, it's a it's yes a flashy, no it's a cool answers, gimmick. Yeah. It, they're all yes and no answers. But then as I actually got into writing it and frankly had the voice really start torturing yeah, the, so the guy, the, the caller, guy um, yeah. it, it, I, I like to think it, it grew into more than just a beep boop gimmick. I like to think that I, I think it, it works better on than just a no, it's perfect. It's just a, it's a, a very, unique yeah, very, you know, you, type of level you, there. You, you create the scenario beautifully. You, Thank you. Know, you. You, uh, you set the tone and then you... Then you run with it. Thank that's, you. That's pretty Thank cool. Thank you very much. So this was, this, these stories and, this, and these other books you have mm -hmm. here, you, you wrote them all, right? No. No, okay. Yeah, I wrote all the stories in Monochromes. Okay. Monochromes and other stories is, is my first collection. Okay. Um, and at the end, we can talk a bit about, you know, what I'm working on now and right. what I'll be going forward with. As I mentioned, Bob Booth started Nikon, the Northeastern Writers Convention, in okay. 1980. Yeah. This, summer will be, wow. this summer will be Nikon 38. Yeah. Um, quick plug, it is always the third weekend in July. It's so this year, it'll be, or next year, yeah, it'll, be it's thurs still it'll be thurs now, so Thursday. Yeah. Um, July 19th through Sunday, the 22nd, uh, 2018. Okay. We have a tremendous uh, dais of guests of honor lined up. Cool. Sarah Pinborough is okay. flying over from England. Wow. She's a tremendous horror writer. We have David Wellington and Dana Cameron okay. as the other two writer guests of honors. Yep. Jason Eckhart, who is yep. actually local to Providence, is our artist guest of honor. Cool. Um, uh, writer Eric Nunnally is our Toastmaster and... Hold that thought, because you'll hear that name again in a second. Cool. And our two official reg recognized legends um, are, and I really love this. This could not be, the legend is, uh, it's a recognition from Nikon of, like, to borrow from Oliver, you know, you're part of the furniture. Yep. You are you are so part of the fabric of, of the con and of, Nikon calls themselves the Nikon family, and it's not a platitude. Cool. And our two legends this year couldn't be more different, because the first legend is Brian Keene. Okay. who is one of the biggest authors in speculative fiction, and he is uh, just, again, hold that thought, you'll hear his name again in the same sure. reason as Eric's. Um, but he's, he's, he's been guest of honor before. Okay. He's, he's just a, a stalwart and a staple of the speculative fiction community. Our other legend is a woman named Carol Whitney, okay. who is not a writer. She is not an artist. She is a fan, and she has been coming to Nikon for over 30 years. Wow. And she has volunteered at every Nikon. Um, she helps run and organize the panel discussions. Okay. Um, she is, again, just there There wouldn't be Nikon without Carol there That's in cool. her seat in the front row at the panels every day. You always, She's like you always know. It's, I wouldn't go that far. Wow. <laughs> but she's just so it's, I really like the fact we're getting to recognize. Um, knee conners on both ends of, of the spectrum from the headliners who help bring other people there okay. to the people who, who make the community 
what it is. That's awesome. Okay. So Nikon, uh, back in 2010, um, when Bob was still alive, we lost Bob Booth uh, oh, fall okay. of, of 2013. Yep. Um, uh, we founded a digital publishing company, Nikon eBooks. Yep. And, uh, you know, cards on the table here. It's, it's been tough the past few years um, since his passing. Wow. With, with, but we're persisting with, with the company. And just this summer, Bob had always wanted to do a charity anthology okay. uh, and donate all the funds to the Jimmy Fund and Dana-Farber okay. Cancer. And I'm yep. assuming anyone watching in New England, I don't have to explain what the Jimmy Fund and what Dana-Farber is. Right. That's it. Is that, is that everybody knows what that is? Yeah. Cool. So, um, so this summer we brought out in both digital and paperback edition this anthology, Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep. It was edited by longtime Nikoners P.D. Kasich and Laura J. Hickman. And the table of contents of this anthology reads like a who's who. Cool. And it was only open to authors who go or have attended Nikon. But I mentioned this year's Toastmaster, Eric Nunnally, and one of this year's legends, Brian Keane. Okay. There are also stories. There's an introduction by uh, New York Times bestseller, Christopher Golden. Okay. There are stories by James A. Moore, yep. Bracken McLeod, Matthew Costello, Thomas Tessier, um, uh, Jack Ketchum. There's a reprint from Charles L. Grant, who I, I mentioned earlier, who was uh, just a... Uh, uh, He's like the godfather of all. I mean, he passed away over a decade ago, but he is, uh, his, his widow um, allowed us to choose any one of his stories awesome. to include. Okay. So, again, this is available um, on, of exclusively on Amazon.com. Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep. It's an amazing anthology, but it's also for an amazing cause. Okay. So if you want, it is horror bedtime stories. Okay. That's what you were, you were asking for a bedtime story earlier. Shameless it. plug, buy the book. You'll, you'll get about 35 of them. That's perfect. <laughs> and okay. And you'll do really well for us, too. All right, it's awesome. Well, you were a great guest. We've got to wrap it up. Okay. Uh, I don't suppose there's any chance I could sneak in one more short story, is there? Oh, Are no, we... I'm afraid not. That was a great story, but thanks. Well, anyway. I appreciate it. All right, well, here we go. And, and hey, you called for the shot of whiskey. This is, this is, this is, we'll do the shot. Yep, because this is, this is Maker's Mark. This is Bob, Bob Booth's uh, drink of choice. Okay, so to Bob, to Nikon, and Harrison, to you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. All right, here we go. Watch more episodes.